percent of consumers read online reviews before visiting a business. What do people see when they look you up online? We give you the tools you need to take control of your reputation. Send surveys to your customers via text message with Testimonial Collector. Get five-star reviews on all the major platforms like Google, Yelp, and more. Track what people are saying about your business with Reputation Manager. Respond to comments, enter negative reviews into happy customers. See what your competitors' customers are saying about them with Competition Tracker. Learn great marketing tactics and what it takes to stay on top. A bigger social presence means more connections. Automatically generate and schedule engaging social media posts with Social 365. Build trust, boost sales, and grow your business. excited about my Thursdays uh, because I have the best guests. Um, I mean, who wouldn't be excited, right? Okay, so let me start off with the um, with the housekeeping, I guess. So you are listening to another day in the life of an entrepreneur, and let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Um, let's see, I have Sean Maddox, who has always been really, really great and um, instrumental to my show, getting the marketing out and stuff like that. So thank you, Sean Maddox. So if you want to get your customers right, you want to get more visibility, check out Sean Maddox. Go I want more customers now dot com and um he'll he'll hook you up. He'll hook you up like me. And of course we are now streaming on Spin Wax Radio. Always looking for you know new artists, new music in all genres, check out spinwaxradio.com. And so let's talk about um, our uh, growing, you know, subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't see who you all are, but I see the download because I'm always getting them. So yay for everybody who's listening, especially on iHeart and Spotify. You guys have been like, like on it. So all you iHeart and Spotify listeners, you're the bomb. Thanks for always subscribing and following and, you know, just Checking out all the guests and all the past, you know, downloads for all the prior guests that I've had on the show. Make sure that if you're a new listener or maybe know somebody who you might think is going to love our show, which you should, go to entrepreneurlifeshow.com. Check out the calendar. Scroll down. You will see every place we are streaming on live at the same time. So who do I have on the show today? You know what? Okay, this is the Entrepreneur Life Show because, you know. We love our entrepreneurs, but how diverse they are. So who we have today, I mean, comes from the professional sector, which we're going to talk about, but has all transitioned to, I mean, he's a singer, songwriter, musician, he's a guitarist, and I, I'm, I'm going to later bring one of his videos. I, I've kind of been like, God, I love his music. I'm already going to buy the album um, because he is very diverse from, I mean, anybody basically is going to love his music. I don't care what genre you are. He's, he's got everything, the country, the groove, the rhythm. He, he reminds me so much of one of my favorite artists that I'm going to talk about. He's not here anymore. But if you remember um, the theme song to this movie is Robinson. Oh, God, I love that movie. Anyway, let me bring um, Chris St. John onto the show. We're going to meet him, talk about him, everything you're going you're gonna to love his music. Let me tell you, I, I'm not saying that because he's on the show because actually I'm going to get it myself because uh, I love it. So let's bring Chris St. John on the show. Hello, how are you? Hey, how are you? I am what? Thank you for being on the show. I so appreciate it. Thanks for having it. me. Gosh, I, I, I love the publicist I work with. Um, so I want to get into, because when I, right, right, when I was... Um, got your your bio and i was like immediately oh yeah and especially when i saw a specific someone that i have been a fan of for years because it's one of my favorite 
movies that this theme song is on, but we'll talk about that for who that is and who also plays the guitar. But I wanted to um, talk about, you know, um, I'd like to ask, you know, growing up and um, what, what led you into, because your, your music is so diverse, um, and that your, some of your favorite artists, that why you transition, because you're, you're in, in the law profession, and I want to get into that. You're in the legal field, and that's been your practice, but then kind of, you know, going into music and singing and being a guitar, what were some of your interests that led you to want to write? Well, I, I uh, was a, a, an avid Beatles fan at five years of age. Uh, I had all of their collect collectibles and albums, and uh, I, I uh, started writing songs. I think I wrote my first song at seven, and then uh, I was listening to all of the 70s music from mm -hmm. James Taylor to Cat Stevens, Jackson Brown, Paul Simon. Then I discovered The Grateful Dead in 1980 mm -hmm. and was taken by that uh, improvisational and um, I started playing guitar at about 15 or so and started to write seriously in my teens. I was writing for myself on, you know, uh, on the back porch or, or on a dune somewhere um, and playing for friends and family. And I, about two years ago, I went on a cattle round up in, in Wyoming and uh, I bought a horse that I, I had ridden <laughs> And I wrote a song called I Need a Horse, and um, I recorded it professionally, and it turned out so good, I cut my first album, I'm Dreaming, and then uh, this year I went to Nashville and cut Fly Away, which I had written, uh, you know, during the, right after the first album, I kept writing, and, and I wrote I, about 16 or 17 songs, and took the, the took 13 that I wanted and put, put them on the album. And, and you did that in a couple of months, right? I mean, when you wrote all the your own originals. Yeah, I, well, it was probably over the course of about uh, six months or so. They were coming fast and furious, uh, which much to my delight. You know, a lot of times in the past, I needed something really tragic or, or inspirational to, to permit me to tap into my songwriting. But when... Mm -hmm. um, after I had cut the first album, I just, I grew, I grew as a songwriter to the point where I felt like I could write it at any time about anything. Why do you think, um, for, I mean, being in the legal profession, okay, that's because that's your general profession, and being, you know, a, a lawyer and, 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 and judge, um, you know, why, um, you know, so late in music, because, and, and like you said, you know, now I'm going to go and go public because of course you started very early, as you said, I think it like at like seven or 14. And so, but now you just say, I think it's time. Why now you say, okay, I think it's time now. I, I'd say, why not? I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, as, my, as I've grown older, I've sort of got taken the position. I'm not afraid to, to do anything anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to leave anything on the table with my life. Uh, um, you know, I started a charity to help AIDS orphans and travel to Zambia with some friends a bunch of times. And um, I bought a horse and, a, and, a, and I started a music career um, because I want to do what I love. I mean, I was a songwriter and a singer long before I was a lawyer. Uh, I just hadn't gone public with it. And, and then I made, made the decision, well, this came out pretty good. Maybe I should share it. And um, people seem to like it. Now, most of us, uh, well, not me, because I, I, I can't sing or do anything, but most people, I would think that when you are, you know, um, I, we could say I can sing. I'm sure we've all watched, you know, uh, American Idol, and you think you can sing, and you think you, you can play. So I'm assuming, are you self-taught guitarist, or how did you know? Our family and friends will say, oh, you're great, but you could really suck. But how, do you, how did you know for yourself to say, you know what, I, I, that you were confident enough to say, you know what, I'm going to now go public, because it, cause you really have to be confident. And before you guys want to tell, I'm going to show you one of his videos in a minute, because, um... It's, it's really good. It's very, your your music is very, I'd say relevant, very relatable, extremely, 
almost like, um, I'd say touching, because I listened to two of the songs. So um, when you're writing, like, what is your inspiration? Well, most of the songs that I write, not all, but most of them are just personal songs. I, I, mm -hmm. I feel free to share with the world what it is I'm feeling and thinking at any given moment on, and on a variety of topics. Um, and I'm bluntly honest about, about life and, and, uh, and the truth of things. Uh, and I think that that resonates with people. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not just right out to write some sort of a, a hit about, you know, some guy who, whose uh, girl left him and he's on a bar <laughs> stool uh, and, you know, he's drinking his, his, and, and crying his life away. I, I, I just don't really write that way. I, I pay close attention to my lyrics and my melodies. Melodies, you know, they come to me. I don't know how or why, but they do. And the lyrics are the same way. I mean, I, I keep sculpting at what it is I've written mm -hmm. until I get it the way I, I really want. You know, one wrong word in a song can ruin it. Um, and, and I think, you know, lyrics are important. And I don't think that too many artists feel that way anymore, or at least not the successful ones. Um, but back in my day, uh, you know, the 70s and 80s, the lyrics were, were, were really important, and they, they are to yes. me. Yes, and, and told a story, not like today's music is just, to me, a lot of rambling, but no disrespect to a lot of, not all today's music, I'm just saying a lot, it's just, it's just well, rambling. I mean, you want the song to tell a story, always, um, but you also want to leave room for the for the listener to figure out what, what that story is all about. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so my lyrics, I think, are um, I'd like to think that they they leave room for interpretation with the listener to yeah. try to figure out what it is I'm trying to say. Sometimes I'm not really sure while the song is coming out while I'm writing it until afterwards, and then I kind of have an idea of what it, what it's about. <laughs> So I know that you've written many songs, which in fact several have um, hit the international, international and independent charts as being like some of the top ten. And so, um, you know, and I know that you really, you started and you became public. This was time around the pandemic. So, um, and that being said, would you say that um, it was just a perfect timing for you? You know, it was it, great. It, I, mean, I don't mean COVID was great, but the time yeah, for right. me to actually have the time to do what I was doing, you know, a lot of really good musicians were out of work, and uh, yeah. so it sort of uh, it was a great opportunity for me not to not just to take the time to write what I was writing because the law practice had slowed down, but um, to, but to employ some really great musicians to mm -hmm. to take what it was I was hearing in my head and and, and making it a song but uh it was it was it was great time in that way and i think during the pandemic too because so many artists because they couldn't work or get out and entertain then it changed your whole visibility as how you had to utilize social media and youtube because now it starts engaging more people because nobody was getting out so i thought of course it's definitely a perfect a perfect time but you know you, you've met you've written many songs but there was Two specific that I really, really enjoyed. So I didn't list them all. I, I got, we got little snippets on your website, so I want to make sure that um, when people go there, you know, you can get the album. But if you don't mind, I want to really, I want to show one of the videos that I just really, really enjoyed. If you don't mind. Sure. Okay. So everybody, so I'm going to bring up a video. If you are listening on the podcast, you can hear it. You can't see it, but you really should go to the website because. He's got some great stuff, and so I want the people who are watching live to be able to really see it. And this song, I'm. It was like if oh, if you don't connect with this song, it's, it was kind of emotional to me. I think I connected with it having children. So let's bring it on the screen really quick so everybody can listen to it and see it. And this is "Fly Away," which I love. One of your latest, Fred. They say time flies, I didn't believe them Before your eyes, they'll be out the door We all wish 
They stay small forever They go so slowly But they're gone so fast Fly away several like many songs since a very young age but i see that on your first hit album which was i think what is it i'm dreaming quickly yes. hit quickly hit the top 10 of the euro indie chart chart list um and worldwide as well with also um i think it's i called you rose and the box and i actually listened to i called you rose and a box of jewel so um and i'll send you my heart but which is really impressive so did you and you know, just your feeling of knowing that your music so quickly um, went to some of the top ten. I mean, ha not as only impressive, but was it surprising to you? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was it was surprising to be honest. I was delighted. Um, it wasn't from the sense of you know, um, from an ego sense that I was delighted. I was just really happy that people were were, were enjoying what I created. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to make money in the music business these days, and for me, it was it was never about the money, and it wasn't really about fame or, or you know, hits. Even though the Hey Siri hung around number yeah. one for uh, five weeks straight, and um, that's on a new album, and Flyaways at four now and climbing, it, it feels really good. But I'm more of the mindset of you know, I love making music. And I love people getting a chance to hear it and enjoy it the way that I enjoy the music I listen to. Mm -hmm. Are you so? At the end of the day, when we leave, when we leave this place, I want to uh, leave my mark, and I want you know, music is yeah. it's like a you know a, a novel or 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 a piece of art, a sculpture. It lasts long after you're gone. People can listen to it, and enjoy it, and I think that that's important to me. Are you self-taught self -taught guitarist? I, I, I've noticed that a lot of, um, at least that I've found, when it comes at least into like um, any type in the country music film, a lot of guitars, bass guitars, a lot of them are actually self-taught. And like, yeah, yeah, I was for a while. Um, and my vocals were, just came naturally to me. But um, when I got into the being serious about uh, doing this, I took guitar lessons mm -hmm. uh, 
to improve my playing and some vocal lessons after the first album to improve my singing, my range, and my my ability to uh, to, to to take my my voice in different places. So with um, now I actually watched the the smash hit for Siri. That is not only hilarious, but it's so t it's so oh my gosh, it's it's so today. And I wanted to know what it, you know, it gives me the whole, as I said, um, Paul Simon was one of my very favorites. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> and I'm, I'm in my 50s, and not because I'm in my 50s, but, and because I was really first, you know, I've always liked Paul Simon, um, and I know that Siri remained like one of, um, on um, the pole position, top five. It, it's a very island feel. I, God, I, I love the lyrics. Um I mean, you know, is he one of also your fans? I, I love guitars. So I'm glad you put up your guitar because, uh, see, Paul Simon played the guitar. I'm sure you know. Oh, yeah, and I, he's, a, he's a much better player than me. He's a very vastly underrated as a guitar player. He, he, his yeah. sensibilities and his ability to play the guitar are incredible. Um, yeah, I mean, that morning I wrote that song. I was at the office at about 7 a.m. And the, uh, the bookkeeper was here, and I, I just heard this melody in my head, and I said, Jesus, it sort of sounds like uh, it has this island feel to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I wrote the lyrics, and the song was done and written in, in about a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. And I sent it to my producer, and he loved it. I, I, I wrote it a cappella first before I put it to the guitar, um, because I didn't want my... You know, me to pick up my instrument and then to change the melody uh, because I couldn't find the chords right away. I wanted to, to just, I wanted to, I wanted it to sound the way I wanted it to sound. And that, uh, so I just recorded it and then I figured out what I was, what, you know, what, what chords to play after. So with, um, are there any other uh, artists aside from uh, Paul Simon that, and you know, that you inspired by? Um, in that time of music, aside from Paul Simon? Oh, so, so many. Uh, I mean, um, you know, I listened to the Eagles and uh, oh, yeah. Stevens, James Taylor, all these artists, that, uh, Fleetwood Mac, um, you know, the, the, the Who, there were so many great, great bands. And that was one thing that, that I think is missing today, is that, you know, there are so many solo artists. People can make mm -hmm. music in their basement, um, uh, so they do it, and without really any input uh, or feedback or collaboration, uh, it's a nice thing that you can do that. But when you had, you know, five musicians that were creating an album, or creating a song, yeah, and it, it was, it, it was, and it is much better than it is for one person to be writing the whole thing typically uh, and, and the other parts it's not to be able to sit down with a band like I did in Nashville and give some freedom to people they had the, they had the Nashville charts and they knew what the song they had demos of the songs yeah and I didn't sit there and say you know I want you to play this exactly like this and we worked together and we, we collaborated and made something I thought think that is it's really good for a lot of reasons, uh, not because it's mine, but because it's ours. Um, we all work on it. My producer, Stephen Wrench, is a great producer, and, uh, and, and, and all the professional musicians, the studio artists, uh, my, my background singer, Leah Haley, who's just a tremendous singer, and uh, we worked so hard before we went down there, picked up the yeah. album. Um, so when we went down, we knew what we were doing, and it, was, it made a big difference. Do you consider um, your music to be country? Because it's sort of, sort, no, of, sort of not. I don't, know. I don't yeah. even know how really to describe it. I mean, I guess the closest thing is Americana, but I'm not sure that does it either. It, yeah. It sort of has some country influences. It's, yeah, it's it, it, it doesn't. Pop, it's rock, it's, uh, you don't know. If you give a listen to the album, it seems like I, I hear a different influences and, and the different yeah different uh, influences in every song I hear a different genre almost in yes a lot of the songs but yet it's still a cohesive piece of uh, art it still it still seems to work I don't and so I, I, don't I agree how to describe it uh, you uh, you asked me before if I could play something and um, I think you know 
this would this would be the first song I would play at, um, after my my shoulder surgery. I'm probably not supposed to do it, um, but if you want, I can I can play you part oh, of the song. You know, I would love it because see, some of your inspirations uh, of of people like you know, um, Steel Fleetwood Mac, even though they separated, I I still got that on my flash drive. I love James Dillon. I, I love guitars. I love bass players. Johnny Johnny Winters, a bass player. Um, so you know when I when I see people who play the guitar um, and you're and it isn't country because I thought I don't know you know it's not it, it is it, it's it's got a little bit of everything um, and I like guitar players you know heart I don't know that's just me <laughs> but yes that would be great I mean if you don't mind yeah I can give it a try. Yes, yes. When they're gone, they're gone for good. Empty space there where they stood. I endure the falling rains. Waiting for my life's last train Will be standing at my door He's dressed in gray, a metaphor The world keeps spinning when we're gone Friends are made not planned. Time goes by, it's understood. When they're gone, they're gone for good. When they're gone, they're gone for good. Empty space there where they stood. Like your dog stands by your side Friends no fault yet they abide sentiment that's really lovely thank you for that oh thank you yeah i wrote that song about uh you know if the people around you start that you start to lose it how to enjoy every moment because um life is life goes so fast you know it's um your music is not only in your lyrics are not only um very clean because which I enjoy, which makes it relatable for everyone. Um, you know, because sometimes it, it's hard to find music that is not only spiritual in today, because I almost sometimes get like that, uh, um, like um, somewhat of a, like a godly feeling, like it's so di diverse. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I mean, and that, that song was sort of like a prayer to me uh, when I wrote it. I have a, a couple of really close 
close friends that are getting much older and, mm-hmm. and uh, nearing the end that have been my friends for 40 years. Uh, and, you know, I just, just had, them, had them in mind and sort of uh, just wrote it as a prayer. Do you have, and this might be, a, this is a random question. Now, I know that you come from the legal profession and um, being, you know, a lawyer and um, a judge. Has, has, have you ever, um, I'd say, gotten any of your lyrics or inspiration from, from cases or something? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I could, no. you know, I could use that in a song. <laughs> you know, I, you know, it's funny you ask that now because I think the only thing that, that I ever sort of took from my profession was the, one of the lyrics in the song I just played, My Complaints a Counterplay. Uh-oh. Uh, that's sort of like I think the only thing that's that slipped in there that I can recall from, from being an attorney. So would you say that music is your first love before the profession of in the legal profession? Oh, uh, definitely. I mean, I, I love helping people, and, and, and uh, I, I'm a very experienced attorney, and I, I work hard to get good results for my clients, and that's not going to change. But, you know, in terms of, of doing what I really love, it's music. It's always been. If there was any artist, one male, one female, current, day, or past, that you would either want to write for or sing with as a duet? Who would that be? It's just I've never been asked that question <laughs> before. Um, maybe, uh, maybe I'd like to to write uh, write for or with uh, Jerry Garcia. He's not really singing well, but uh, he had some really good uh, songwriting sensibilities and was a tremendous guitar player um uh, a woman i don't know i uh, i guess uh you know modern day allison krauss if we go back in time patsy klein oh yes yeah yeah i like patsy klein the um so do you and i know that now I, i hear that it's very for nashville um that just seems to be the the heart of where a lot of your um, and and now I can't call I wouldn't say country's country because how you have so many different artists you can't even claim that it's country anymore I I mean um, I'm still a, a Willie Willie Nelson fan and um, I don't believe really yeah, cons- I don't I don't know I don't consider him really country and like the Dixie Twigs D- Dixie Twigs well, even though you know they're not sort of but it seems to be the heart and really hard to um because that's a place to go to really hard to, to break that to get in do you find that to be accurate because a lot of people transition and say you know i've got to go to nashville but country isn't the same anymore like you say it's um it used to be the horse and i lost my dog and all that but it's such um it's changed so much and especially like with billy cyrus and it's it's not that it's almost like I don't know country. I'm a really big fan of old country. I'm not that great a fan of new country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I prefer. Uh, I think the the songwriting was much better years ago than it is now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in terms of breaking in, uh, Nashville for me wasn't a place that I wanted to go down there to break in. I went down there to cut an album. It was. It's where the best session musicians are in the world, and you can, you get, mm-hmm. you get, a, these musicians can play anything you want them to play. Right, right. Um, so, you know, they had my demos and they knew what I had written before, and they, uh, they knew what sound I was looking for, so it, it, it worked out really well. And then if you go to Nashville to cut an album, you can cut, cut it relatively quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, having uh, pulling one musician in at a time as a session musician to, to play a part, I mean, you could spend many months getting trying to get it right. We, right. You know, we had we had six musicians in a room and we were playing together and we just cut the album. I mean, we just cut it um, musically. It, it was cut in a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the instrumentation and vocally, you know, I did a bunch of scratch tracks 
and then I went back and I rehearsed the songs for a few months with my background singer, and then went back down and cut the final vocals for the album. So um, I, I, I like working in Nashville because it's efficient. Yeah. And, and it's then you're playing with the best. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I've heard. So sorry from with a few artists I've had on here. And so would you say that, um, you know, are you working on anything else right now that you're coming up with, that you're coming out with? I have enough songs probably for another album right now, but um, I'd like to get a few more better ones in there. And that typically what will happen is if, if I'm trying to write the album, I'll write a few while I'm doing it, while I'm writing, you know, starting to prepare demos for the album. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm probably going to take a, a few month break and then and then get back into it hard and start working on the next album because uh, I just can't stop. Well, I as I said, I'm gonna I'm actually going to get it because you can actually go to your website and get it and get little pieces of snippets, which I appreciate. You can get you know little bits of the the, the songs that you've written. So I would tell everybody to go to the website. But if if you don't mind, I want to play a little bit more of the end part of. Fly away because I just really love and I, whoever did that video, um, they really did a good job of telling a story. Um, yeah, so they I did. Say that. They did, and uh, it was Char Charlotte Avenue Productions out in Nashville. I I, I, I came up with the concept uh, of uh, you know showing all the photographs of me and my son from birth through him graduating. High school and going off to college, and and then um, we took it from there. And, and I, I'm happy with how it turned out. I think it tells oh. the story that that I told in, in, in a visual way. Oh yeah, it, it it was really it was one of the ones I just kept kind of rewatching, and um, I just I just I liked the whole concept. But also, I really loved Siri too. I love that the whole like the island, but I like the concept. Yeah. And then you use a lot of inner interacting with everything that's happening today and I want to get into that after I just show the the, the balance list but about that um it's so uh people it's so like technol you know how technology has changed everything and I, I get that so I just want to bring a little bit really quick because I, I I'm sorry I like the song it's probably just for me <laughs> thank you <laughs> we say I love you gives you that whole you know with the birds in the end the album cover is great you know I just it's it's really nice um that's why so I'm actually getting it like I told you when I saw it's like yeah I'm downloading it um the album is, that. it's really it's really nice so okay so I want to talk I, I want I do want to talk about um Siri because 
when I saw that, it is so um, about everything today. And I would say that in, in the pandemic, how we had brought up how, you know, you did a lot in writing and you had that time in the pandemic. And this is like nailed it. Siri just literally nailed it. You know, um, everything I, I sang in that song is, is the way I feel about modern technology. I, <laughs> And the one line about, you know, I can't remember my passwords, uh, you know, I'm always yelling out in my office to, to, to anyone who cares to listen, I can't remember my passwords because you write them down, and for some reason they don't take when you try to go back in, and the criteria for every, every different, uh, you know, website uh, is different, so you can't use the same password, you're changing them all the time, and that's just one example of, you know, the downside of modern technology it goes much deeper than that. Um, you know, in terms of when I grew up, look, I'm not that old. I'm, uh, I've been accused by, by some of the younger folk that when they comment on that song, like being a baby boomer, I'm too young to be a baby boomer. But, um, you know, when I grew up, there were no, no cell phones. We, we, we played outside. We had a great time. We got to connect with our, our neighbors and our friends in a real way. Um, and uh, we really enjoyed life. And we weren't constantly on our phones. Uh, you know, we weren't at the beck and call of the entire world. But it's a, there's some blessings about technology. I can accomplish so much more with, with my computer, and the ability to email and to, to and respond to texts and uh, so forth. You know, you're you're but the downside to that is you're you're accessible 24 7 and people mm -hmm. expect you to be and uh it sort of steals your steals your your life uh if you let it and um and i'm i'm as guilty as anyone you know constantly on my phone um but i don't i don't know whether it's made i don't know that it's made the human condition better um I don't oh, I know agree. that it's made us happier. You know, our kids are on 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 uh, constantly on their phones. They're exposed to some really bad things uh, at a young age, and uh, it's just changed. It's changed the tra trajectory of um, of our young people, and I don't think it's in a good way at all. Well, I agree with you. Is why it's it's so. Um, when I saw it, it's. Hold on, I'm, an, I'm sorry. I was, I was, I was like, uh, I was kind of listening to it. Just a second. Let me take it down really quick. Um, hold on. I'm sorry, you guys. I like this, and I was like, while well, I was looking over, I was listening to it. I was advertising it because I really like music. So I didn't mean to, I was like, I was excited about it. So, because this is Siri, you guys. So that just shows you how excited I am. Um, because, you know, I, I, I see what you're saying. And when I, when I listened to it, I was like, oh my gosh, it had everything from like social media. And I, I also grew up in a time where I had to look at a map as well as, um, you know, I didn't have to use my phone, but you get caught up on the, on the social media and you can be on there for hours. And so, um, and it's easy to get caught in it, to lose, um, concept with what's happening outside. You know, yeah, because... and I was giving you the serious, the serious talk about about modern technology. The <laughs> song itself is is, uh, is tongue in cheek, and it's a novelty song, and it just pokes fun at the whole thing. It's um, it's it funny, fun yes. Song. Yeah. But it but it's funny, but it's totally you can't not under. Okay, so I know I threw it up there. I just want to play a little because I like I just like it so much, um, and I want everybody else to like it. So. <laughs> And I wouldn't see why you wouldn't like it. But I, I wanted you guys to just get a a, go li a little listen for it. I had been, like, putting it out on the podcast. I just really enjoyed it. And people were, like, they were giving me the thumbs up on my podcast. So for those who, you know, didn't see it on my marketing podcast campaign, and if you're, like, watching it live or something, then you can check it out. But I just want you to, it, it's, it's so great. Just one second. We had no cell phones, no social media too, no emails, no texting, face to face, me and you. Series available, looks like I'm talking, text and emails coming, no children, text for talking. Can't remember my passwords, things run like a river, my phone is like an organ, you kill me.
progress is a sword, it cuts both ways. No. It, that's totally, it's like the, it gives me this island, like, you know, vibe feeling. And very, um, you know, with, um, I, I got a, a, that strong feeling of um, Simon, because that's how, you know, I remember, <laughs> you know, that kind of feel. Um, sort of had the Graceland kind of feel to it, yeah. I mean, we're all a product of the people who came before us in terms yeah. of, you know, we all, we all collect influences as artists. And there's no doubt you can hear some Paul Simon in yeah. that song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, and I think I just, I just really like, I really, I really like uh, Paul Simon. Um, so, uh, so I know we're coming about close to the the show time, but I wanted to make sure that you know if there's, um, I you know the people really know where your music is. It's gonna be on my website. So, guys, I'm not saying it because he's on my show because I really like him on the show. But the music is really just really, really good. And I'm like really anticipating more um, music that you're putting out there because I agree with, you know, um, just because I'm in my 50, I like a lot of today's music, but I, I don't really connect with it as much. And it's not everybody music. I like everybody music, you know, that um, everybody connects with. I just think your music is just very inspiring. Not only it, it's very today and yesterday, it's like the best artists never go away and so that's like um you can listen to anything from elvis the beatles the temptations and you know um all the way to today and you can always hear some of that inspiration in today's music so it's like and, and the words you never forget the words i can listen to something you know from um from anything from the 70s and still know the words even though I haven't, I haven't heard it. Does that make sense? So this is well, that kind of music. Are, <laughs> songs are sort of a roadmap to our lives. Yeah. Uh, they, they, you know, they, you, when you hear a song, it brings you back to the, to the time that it was popular and you were listening to that song. Yeah. So uh, that's really one of the great things that I think about music. It's, it, it transports you back to it at another time. So before we exit the show, if you don't mind just sharing a little bit um, of where they can get your music. Now, all of you guys, you know, you can go to my website, entrepreneurlifeshow.com. The interview will be there the entire time. His link will be there, but you really, really should go to the website. So when we do end the show today, I'm actually going to be downloading the album because um, I'm going to put it on, download it onto my flash drive for my car so I can listen to it in my car. So I think everybody should get it. Um, so yeah, it's www.chrisstjohn.com, uh, and it's C H R I S S T J O H N dot com. Uh, on YouTube, it's Chris St. John dot uh, Chris St. John Music. Uh, you can listen uh, and watch all of the videos. If you order a CD, I'll sign it and write a note if anyone wants, um, and send it out to you. We have some merchandise up on the on my webpage as well. Some cool stuff to wear. Um, I'm happy to write a note to anyone who wants to, to buy what we have to sell. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guest. And you know, for even though I know you, you know, you're not in the best physical condition on <laughs> your horn that you were able to play for us a bit. So that was really, really special. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, I, I, I am still in a, in a sling, but um, but I, I can't stop fighting. Um, <laughs> I can't. I can't stop. Well, thanks for everybody who has listened on the podcast and then who's tuned in. And if you watch on the replay, make sure you give a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see the entire interview because you are only listening on your podcast versus watching live, whether you be on Twitch or Twitter or LinkedIn or YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, uh, thank you so much. Just go to the website, entrepreneurlifeshow.com, and you can watch the full interview and how to connect with John. And until next Thursday, I will see everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye. Entrepreneur.